Hello fellow book nerds and welcome back to my channel. So today I want to do something a little different. As I said in the first video, I really want to do a book review, but I think this video has to happen first. That way you understand when I refer to books a certain way in the future and you won't have to be like, what are you talking about? I can be like, hey, watch this video here or go back and watch that video and then you'll know. So in today's video, I want to tell you how I rank slash categorize my books. So before I get to that, I just want to say one little quick thing that I noticed. I didn't really go into detail as much as I wanted to in the first video about what types of books you will get on this channel. I did say contemporary romance, but that was, <laughs> that was a little too uh, vague. I just want to say it's going to be contemporary romance slash new adult slash college. And then in that you'll get everything from, you know, student teacher to age gap to friends to lovers to enemies to lovers to darker romances. Just I read a little bit of everything. And I also biggest would be good for this channel is I don't read one thing in like abundance. I spread it out. So if I read one thing, one type, one book, then the next will be different and I change it up because I'm not a big fan of repetitive. So it will always, I'll always have a variety to recommend and introduce you guys to. And I have something else to say on that, but I'm gonna save it to the end of the video, a little teaser. So stick with, stick with me till the end of the video and cause I just wanna run an idea about you guys, about what I wanna do for the upcoming weeks on this channel. So before we get to that, or yeah, before we, so before we get to that, let's get into what this video actually is. How I rank my books. So I basically rank them in five categories. It's, you know, you want to have as little categories as possible so you don't get too crazy and get too lost about them. And those are books I did not like, solid, question mark, five star, and hall of fame. So did not like, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Did not like them, wasn't into them, wouldn't recommend, wouldn't read again. Some of you might even say those books, the did not finish, that will never probably be me. I do, I do tend to finish once I hit like the 30% mark. I tend to finish all books, especially because I have Kindle Unlimited. So especially if I pay for a book, because I, I, don't, I don't buy a lot via Kindle. I tend to spread it out maybe like three a month or something because it just adds up. So if I pay for a book, I'm gonna damn well finish it. You know, it costs, it's a lot of money to give for Kindles these days. So I will always finish them, but I might not like them. I'm not gonna do a lot of those books on this channel because you know why waste my time and energy on talking about books I did not like. So I've probably read like 530 books around and I can only think of five that I did not like, that I just couldn't wait for them to be over. So I'm very picky in the sense of I'm easy to win over, but I'm picky in the sense of before I even read and get into the book, I'm choosy. So I make sure essentially that I know I'm gonna like it. So I don't come across a lot that I don't like. And like I said, maybe I'm just easily entertained. Could be both. Second category, solid. Solid, don't think it's anything bad just cause it's toward the ending of the rankings. Solid is actually, you know, solid. Every author should always want to write a solid book. It's those books that they're not mind-blowing, they're not really angsty, they don't make you emotional, they're not gonna cause you to s stir in, you, in your sleep and have to talk about it. Like, you know, they're those books that you close it, you're done, and you're like, you know what? It was a good book. You enjoyed it. Enjoyed the ride. Sweet book, maybe a little funny, maybe a little dark. You know, just th those solid, good books. And between solid and five star, I would say those should be your two most populated categories because it's hard to write those crazy, like angsty, mind-blowing books. You know, a lot, most books do tend to come out as solid and there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's good. <laughs> and we need those solid books, honestly. You know, I mean, we, you can only handle so many emotional books and just like taboo-ish or, you know, I mean, you can only handle so many of those until you're like, give me something just calming. <laughs> you know, like it's gonna give you a little bit of a roller coaster, but nothing overwhelming. I actually have, speaking of solid, I actually have three authors that I call my solid authors that I specifically do not read all of their stuff. I save it 
for when I'm in like a book slump and I haven't had a good one in a while, then I go to this one of these three authors because I know they're going to give me a solid book. And those authors are, in case you're wondering, V. Keeneland, Penelope Ward, and A.L. Jackson. So I've only read like a good handful from each, but every time I read one of their books, you know, you're going into it. It's gonna be a solid book. You're gonna like the story. You're like, you know what? This will be a good journey and it will help you get out of your bunk slum. That's solid. I like a, a good solid book. Number three, question mark. I just realized that was backwards probably for you. Question mark. That didn't really look good. Now you're probably wondering what is a question mark book? Like what, you try to guess. <laughs> you wouldn't. A question mark book tends to be those romantic thrillers or those stories that have a big secret, big reveal that they keep hinting through the book that you know is coming. And you tend to just plow through those like crazy, you read them so quickly because you have to know what the heck is gonna happen. Like what is that big reveal? And sometimes then you get to the reveal and it's not as good and the whole book just deflates. It loses all like energy and you're just, you're kind of over it. And sometimes it's great and then the backlash after and then it's good and boom, that's the book. So the reason I call it a question mark is because then when you're done with the book, walk away, give it a few weeks and you think about it, is the book that good because of the book as a whole or was it good and you read it fast because you just wanted to know, you know? So it's like, was it the anticipation that made it a great book or was it actually the book as a whole? Which like those question mark books, I say definitely need second reads, even though in the second read, you know what the big reveal twist is it gives you more time to focus on everything else and if you don't enjoy it, like everything else then the book isn't as good it was more of your anticipation and if everything else is good then the book as a whole is good did that make sense that's why i call it a question mark because you don't know where it stands that's why sorry i'm like i have something in my eye i know i keep touching it Ugh. hmm okay it's like i just want to scratch the crap out of it Anyway, so it's <laughs> right when I said sorry about going to it, I go back to my eye. So those books might stay in the question mark category or they can be bumped someplace else. So that's why I call them question mark. Now, fifth, five star books. Five star, I'm not gonna harp that much on because it'll make more sense when I get to the next category, but they're the five stars. They're the ones you love, the ones you talk about, you follow the authors, you can't wait for their next book, you recommend it they're the ones we review like everyone loves a five-star book those are some of the, like they're the best of the best now i'm not gonna stick long on that one because probably wondering what's the difference between a five star and a hall of fame let's jump into it so hall of fame hall of fame those are your cream of the crop your favorites your babies and you gotta be strict with hall of fame difference between five star and solid where the majority of our books probably get categorized into solid and five star hall of fame you should be super picky about what you put in there because it's your favorites like i said i read probably 530 books roughly and i would say i only probably have between 30 and 40 in my hall of fame and i think that's even probably too high I would have to, maybe one day I'll like sit down and write them all and I'll know exact number. But yeah, like out of 530, probably 30 to 40 tops are my hall of fame. You got to be that picky. Because like how credible would I be if I said I read 500 books and 450 of them were in my hall of fame? You know, that's like basically me saying every book I read, I think is a hall of fame book. So how can you take my recommendations when I say that seriously when so when I say a book is a hall of fame you should be like oh that's a special book to her so if I say every single book I read is hall of fame you're like you said that about the last one you know what I mean kind of like you don't you shouldn't say your favorite movie tv show song you should have 80 of them you should have to select five to ten max um, yeah <laughs> maybe I'm a little judgy that way but you know you want it to, I want it to be special you know those favorite authors those favorite books you should only have a couple because they're really special to you. So that is how I rank my books. I don't actually write these down. I kind of just do it in my head whenever I'm like reading a book. I'm like, hmm, solid or, you know, five star. <laughs> That's just kind of, I do it for fun, you know, and it's, 
how I like to just break them off, especially when I, I get asked for recommendations. Sometimes people are like, give me your best of your best. Or they're like, I'm in a book slump, how do I get out of it? And I'm like, oh, I would recommend probably more of a solid. You know, sometimes necessarily you don't, when you're in a slump, you don't want someone giving you their groundbreaking book because their groundbreaking might not be yours. But if you said, this is a solid book, I liked it, you'll enjoy it, you won't regret it, there's a good chance you'll feel that same way. You know, makes sense? Hopefully. So before I go, I know I said in the beginning, I wanted to talk to you guys about something. I had an idea. There's a hair. Okay. So I had this little, I was thinking the other day about how my favorite trope is the bully slash mature high school romance. And that's a very popular category right now. A lot are coming out and everyone's talking about them. Everyone wants recommendations on them. I even, on one of my groups, I typed because I just, I did it for everybody else, but I also kind of wanted to do it for me. I typed a long list of every single bully slash, well, it was more adult, uh, ma it was more mature high school romance book. I just typed a whole list of them and it was like three pages long. And um, so I've been sitting on that. I wanted to do a video on maybe my favorite high school romance slash, you know, high school romance slash bully books. And I'm like, <laughs> that video could be three hours long. Cause even if I was able to keep it to my select favorite eight, <sighs> like that's a lot. And I'm like, what if I made it a series, you know, and every episode, you know, video, but episode, I'll, I'll talk about like my four favorites or like just four ones that I liked. And then I could just keep going because there's so many. And since, especially because there's so many coming out and authors are going to keep writing them, essentially the series will never end. It would just be part one, two, three, four. And then thinking of that, I'm like, what if I, I could do that with every category. You know, like my favorite student teacher, my favorite age gap, my favorite enemies to lovers, friends to lovers, rom-cons, you know, like break them down into categories and just, because essentially it will, they'll never, the series will never end because authors got to write the books. That way I can still get as many recommendations to you guys out there. But for my favorite books, I'll still do individual single videos, like reviews on them. So, but they'll still be in the pack of the series. I'll mention them just in case you maybe you don't want to see a full review. You just want the name of it or you want the name of it. And then you'll go back and watch my full review after. Cause remember I'm going to do part review, part discussions. So still want to draw you in. So I was thinking of doing that and I wanted to do that soon. Cause I'm feeling the itch to do that. But that will also break up doing, you know, constant, uh, you know, book review, book review, book review. So I can tell you this, the next video will be a review and I'm going right into the hall of fame. I gotta start, you know, start strong with my first book review. And it's going to be I Dare You by Chantel Tessier. And I'm really excited to do that because this whole month I'm basically doing all rereads because at the end of the month, like part two, book two of the I Dare You series is coming out and just a whole bunch of books that will either require a reread or I just want to do so I can get back into that world and remember it. So like I'm rereading LJ Shen's Center of Saint series because the spinoff one's coming at April 29th. I'm rereading Lucia Franco's Off Balance series because the third one's coming out early May. So I'm doing a lot of these to refresh and perfect timing because I can give them the reviews that I've been itching to do. But that's why I wanted to bring up the whole doing a series thing because I don't, I'll probably throw that high school romance video in between reviews, especially because I'm not done rereads with the Sinners of Saints series. I'm almost there. So that's what's coming up. I'm going to leave you guys for today. I've talked long enough. So happy reading and I'll see you guys next time in my next video. Goodbye.